Okay, so let's go part two. Or whatever you're up to when you're watching it. So we've fitted the test signal ring, which is a little loop. And then we have to short JP3 with solder. This is for the test mode. And JP3 is hiding. There's two hiding. Of course the magnifying glass disappears just when you need it. in the last place you look. So where's JP3? And I notice actually is it that, uh, that talking about it with the display off and I wonder if it's hiding underneath it. So JP5, JP6, JP2 and JP1. But no sign of a JP3. Okay, not finding it. I'm finding a sharp wire now. Don't like that sticking out quite so much. So JP3 is uh, not. Oh, it's next to U4. That's Q1, U5, U3, U4, JP3. JP3 already has a resistor on it. I forgot to return my lights on. There we go. A little light on the subject. So yeah, it is there, JP3, but it's got a resistor on it. So I don't believe that we should be shorting that out. This, this is the instructions for the LCD board. So it does state a 20 pin times 2 connector and two 1 times 2 pin connectors. So that's a 20 pin times 2 connector or a 40 pin connector. That's a 2 pin connector, that's a 2 pin connector. And this will sit on it and then slot into the two here which will just provide support the, the ones on the left will not provide any electrical contacts as far as I'm aware and then you can remove the protective cover now the first time I did this it lifted the display up and that is not a desirable thing so that is now scratch free protected now we have to apply 9 volts power okay, and then check some voltages in fact it's supposed to 
Yes, they're making a liar of me as usual. They want me to check the voltages before I apply the LCD board. So it's been on and off a few times now. So I just hope it doesn't damage any of the connections. Okay, I'm going to pause and get an envelope power supply. Okay, so in the absence of having the correct connector for the barrel jack, I'm going to be very naughty and solder the wires onto the back of it. And I have just checked the continuity so that I know I have the polarity the right way around. Because the other alternative I've got is to use some huge alligator clips or crocodile clips. Ow! So I just put some, just put my hand on some molten solder. Not for the first time. Certainly not for the last. So it's a positive inner. I've just tested this by referring to this as ground, the BNC connector. And this is the power supply I built in another project, which unfortunately I lost the video to. Can you believe it? Mr. Careful loses his video. So make sure the output is turned off. There's only one output functioning at the moment. And there we go. And I can set this. I've got coarse voltage control. And I have a fine voltage control. And I have confirmed the calibration on this. If I turn the current limiter right down, it will uh, knock the voltage off. So we need to... We aren't switched on yet, I hasten to add. So I have to check the voltage on TP22, which is buried in the middle. It should be 3.3 volts. Test it and then shot JP4 out. So that's where I'm testing it. And that's where I need to shot out JP4. Try and get everything in view for you. There we go. The cheap test meter back again. So I'm probably looking for a hole that has no connection to it. DP22 It's supposed to be around the middle here somewhere <whistles> Ah, I have just spotted a problem the USB socket has got one of the pins not connecting. <coughs> so before I go any further, I'm going to have to remedy that. See you in a bit. Okay, so it's with great sadness I have to report the death of the USB socket. It did not survive extraction, but I got the socket out. Basically one of the pins, the, there's three pins at the back and two in front of them and the back pin was sticking out so it wouldn't have communicated with anything that I plugged it into. Uh, I'm not too sad about it because it's only a socket, I can get another one at a future date. I have now located the Edens TP22 here and also a TP25 here to monitor the minus through the minus uh, rail. The TP22 should be 3.3 volts. So we're set to 9 volts hopefully. And we can turn the output on and nothing explodes. It's drawing a little bit of current which is good. Oh and a flashing green LED. Nothing like a flashing green LED to start your day off. So if I bring the meter in there 3.3 volts and the negative voltage is there 
And that looks all rosy. That's all they're asking us to look at. It says, apply 9 volts power. TP22 should be plus 3.3 volts around 3.3 volts. If the voltage at TP22 is good, disconnect power. Short JP4 with solder permanently. But JP4, I think I've already established. You can't. There isn't one. And if there is, it's very well hidden. So I think we'll just try the LCD display on. So that's off. Here's a lovely old CD display. Certainly from what I have seen of it, it looks like a great little display. That's it, so power on, display lights, it's boot loading. It's a bit of a joke because it is obviously a fake case. Okay, <coughs> now I would have expected the uh, input to have the pulse on. So let's see what the instructions say next. This is the troubleshooting thing. Connect power supply again, you should see LCD light up. Press various buttons and switches to verify their functions. Well that one's ground, so that's stopping the input working anyway. I just put my finger in the vicinity of the input. Obviously there's a lot of digital electronics here, so it's not going to give the normal mains buzz waveform. And I'm I'm here and I'm there. Oh, so this one's the time base, up and down. This one says OK. So that's freezing it. This is auto. Auto what though? Because being a oh, single and multiple trigger. Yeah, so it's going to take a bit of figuring out on the buttons. Obviously I've not read the manual, because that would be sensible. Okay, so I'd like to start the trace off again, please. What if we just turn it off and on again? No, that wasn't reset it either. Maybe reset well. It's a lovely little product anyway. Oh, I see, so there's some sampling there. Yeah, okay, so that is functioning. I just need to find the input lead. You saw how much junk is on my bench, it's unbelievable. The bench was only really designed for playing with computers, not for getting stuck into electronic projects. Excuse me. Okay, so that's now triggering again. And we can make our input less sensitive. Behold the sine wave. Uh, sine wave. Behold the square wave. So if I can figure out how to increase the time base. So those of you who are calculating. Oops. 
would have noticed that at 0.5 milliseconds per div it is exactly that it's 0.5 milliseconds on 0.5 milliseconds off thereby it's one kilohertz so that's holding running this is time base up and down I believe there are some other functions but I'll have to work those out incidentally the LED is showing the trigger which is a really nice feature this is sensitivity what is it? I'm sure. Oh, that's ah. So that appears to be for the time base. No. No. Time base is there. One volt per div. Two volts per div. Five volts per div. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's going to take some playing around with, and there'll be a, calib a simple calibration as well, which I'll come back to. I may need to read more instructions. Oh, there you go. Test mode. When test mode is used, it is possible to find out various. Op opens for all port pins and shots for yada yada yada. No, you need to read that in detail. Oh, I see. Hold down SW4 and press reset. That would be good if I could find which is SW4. That one, to hold that down, press reset. Doesn't say for how long. I believe it is possible to update the software with the the genuine software from J JYE Tech. Okay, so I, there's a display mode on here, but I don't know how you use it. But basically, this is now showing the the, uh, the frequency of the incoming signal. The cycle, which is obviously one millisecond, the pulse width ratio, which is about 0.5. There's some jitter on it due to the fact this is not a screen lead and there's electronics all over the place. The test meter sat next to it, interfering with it. Uh, and then your, your voltage is here. The average voltage, RMS voltage is 1.6. And even though we should can change these, so which. The, ah, that's the one. So you, with it running you press and hold and that changes the display function and there's other stuff as well I know that the thick green line there between the thinner lines shows the which parts of the signal so the full sample is out here somewhere and that you can move the trigger backwards and forwards in time there's all sorts of things it does we haven't even started there's a whole new uh, user manual here as well that you'd obviously need to take some time to go through ah that's the select button so that selects single trigger normal auto this what does this? What is this? It's a little purple symbol, but I've no idea what it says. Oh, positive and negative trigger. Oh, brilliant. Let's just turn the background off. Okay, doesn't want to do it now. Ah, this is the one I was looking for. I don't know if you can see on the right hand side, but the little arrow that was purple has turned to blue. So I'm moving the trigger up and down. Oh, oh. and if you hold, press and hold, it goes in large increments. 
that is absolutely fantastic. It's a little bit fiddly, but it's going to do the job. So that's just in self-test mode. Uh, I'm now going to assemble the case. So I'll get rid of the power supply and see you in a minute. Okay, so here's the other packet that we haven't undone. And I have not even looked at this at all. Everything else is just out of shot of the camera, it's not gone very far. Now I have heard that this is fiddly. We have these little off cuts of plastic that come out that don't do anything. And to me the first job is to get rid of this protective stuff with a knife. And it's going to take some persuading. So I'm sure there's more interesting things in life than watching a man peel self adhesive brown paper off an acrylic box. Because it's probably going to take me 20 minutes, so I'll see you shortly. Here we are 20 minutes later. So Turns out the best thing to get these started is actually fingernails and if you pull them off at 45 degrees there's the least chance of it ripping as it goes over the holes. I will warn you though, the eagle eyed amongst you will see that it broke there. That was literally just pulling the paper off it. Now I'm sure it won't matter because there's two of these pieces and I seem to recall that usually with this type of kit they can press together to make up the distance. So it will be supported. There's a remnant on that one as well. Oh it's underneath. I'm trying to take it off from the opposite side to the one it's on. So there's quite a few pieces to this and I believe a lot of it sandwiches together. If you had fingernails when you started you probably haven't by now. But this is going to be tricky. The reason I know it's going to be tricky is because the buttons which there are six. <sighs> I've got paper on also. But at least it will start with the fingernail. So while I remove those, you can go make a break. Okay. Uh, the case didn't come with instructions, but it was a simple matter to Google DSO138 case and I managed to find this, which I'll put a link to in the video. And basically there's eight pages of stuff, I'm not too concerned with most of it. But what is interesting is that you start off with your back plane and the back plane is the one that has the least number of holes in it. And I'm not sure how symmetrical that is, but we'll soon find out. So you start off with the back plane, 
and then you use the nuts as spacers so it's a little fidgety job I did have the feet these acrylic feet mounted through the circuit board but they're not needed for this that was great if they were standalone but they're not so let's see how we get on I hope there are enough knots. There's four top knots. Not sure what these teeny ones are for. There is a note on the instructions that not all the knots are required. And you just know this is going to be fiddly because we have to try and predict how tall the whole thing will be but anybody who's ever made model aircraft and such like will have no difficulties with this Incidentally, I had to desolder my power supply wires, uh, so I won't be able to switch it on because I don't have a power supply with a barrel jack on. But uh, I can soon purchase one of those from a well known auction site. Incidentally, the order for this came really quickly, which, which delighted me because inevitably they come from China. But I think somebody in the UK had a stockpile. So that was quite reassuring. Okay, so next, another nut on top of these. And I must say, from what I've seen a bit so far, it seems to be a perfectly workable oscilloscope. And yes, I haven't calibrated it. Uh, that's something for another day, but it looks like the top of the case won't be too difficult to remove. And all you're doing really is tweaking the, the trimmer capacitors to make sure it reproduces a true square wave. But as the built-in signal is only 1 kilohertz, it's not going to be a very accurate scenario. But when you see what I'm going to do with it, as its first job, you'll start to understand why this is such a suitable product for what I want to do. And you just know these are not going to Exactly right. But hey ho, we'll try it. Now then. The next one does show the side panels on. And the first one is this one, which obviously has the two connections on. And already I can see that it's going to be tricky. I'd never seen a case like this until I got a Raspberry Pi and I did the same thing with that. I used a little too much force and broke the flipping things slightly. It's 
all going too well. It has to be an issue soon. Okay, that's looking quite nice. Now then. Incidentally, in the drawings, they've left the protective cardboard on because it just wouldn't show up on camera. There are numbers on these sections I've just noticed. They are in German. Abildung, which I assume means assembly. So the first intermediate plate goes on and you've got to put it under this display. Aha! So this one has slots in four components. So it can only go one way. So this is a bit of a spacer rip more than anything. Okay, so that slots nicely around those components. And Abildong 6 is with the display on. Now then. These two appear to be identical, but I think there's a trick. Now there's something else going on because it says there's a caution of a two pin connector in the top left hand corner which I can't see and then it says connect the display first intermediate plate by a little of the four little two M6 bolts then insert the two intermediates on the stuck plates Hmm. I don't know what's happening, but I'm running out of parts very rapidly. It's always a good sign. But then I Ab build on six caps for slide switches and push buttons. Cap for reset accidentally forgotten. Right, I'm confused now as to how this would work. Because these are not hollow, so how are they supposed to sit on it? These could sit here for the push buttons, I get that. But what I don't get is this don't appear to have a part for that. Looking through everything that we've got.
Right. <coughs> so mostly you'll have to either improvise or contact the manufacturer. So, unfortunately, we can't assemble the last bit. Not the first time I've had to contact a manufacturer for missing parts, but I just want to give you an idea of Ah. And I must say, despite the missing parts, <coughs> And the surplus but nots that aren't required. But better too many than not enough. The astute among you will notice that the light has suddenly got brighter. It's been running on the same set of AAA batteries, uh, AA batteries for about four years, three years, and they just decided to go really dim. Uh, it's a variable light. I'll do an article on how the sort of equipment I use to make these videos. But here we have it, this is our almost complete product. So we have these buttons here which are just barely touchable. And you can see from the side there how they work. That is a really elegant solution. Obviously low cost. And then these points here are still accessible as are the switches that aren't accessible. Sorry, just bounce the camera. Uh, just unfortunate that I can't plug it in. Here's our test lead. The only power supply I've got is 12 volts, and I am aware that you're not supposed to use 12 volts with this. So, a bit of a telltale crack there when I broke it, but. I am really pleased with that as a product. It costs less than £20, including the case with missing parts and postage and packing, and I'm delighted. Uh, I'll do a little thing on it just to take us to the next level. Wow, even the test point is just about accessible, but obviously not with this huge clip. <laughs> it would be no trouble to solder a bit of wire onto that to extend it. But I think that's really slick. Yeah, it could do with a bit of tightening here and there, but why bother? You know, it's protecting the product, which is what it's designed to do. So, thanks very much for watching. If you care to like the video, it will help me. If you care to subscribe, you will know when new videos come on board. And as I've always said on this channel, I really want to do stuff that connects together and works together. So this is, this is part of the little workshop set up uh, for doing the sorts of projects like the, uh, LED, the LED light, like the LED programmable lighting controller. And hopefully you can join me. We can have a lot of fun doing these together. So I'll see you later. Thank you.